Hi guys, so today we are focusing on the Indian Ocean earthquake of 2004. Uh, this is the section 3 case study within the Managing Earthquakes section of the Rest of Earth unit. So, what must we be able to do? We must be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of causes impact of the earthquake using a case study from an MADC or LADC. We are choosing the LADC option uh, and looking at the Indian Ocean earthquake. We must be able to identify the plates involved describe short-term and long-term impacts, and evaluate how the country prepared for and responded to the earthquake in both the immediate, short-term, and long-term strategies implemented after the event. So, in terms of background, you'll have found a lot of this out from your own research. Um, it took place on the 26th of December 2004, 9.2 magnitude. This made it the second largest earthquake ever recorded, the first being that in Chile in 1960. It had the longest duration of 10 minutes. Uh, I know in your research you found some discrepancies over the plates involved, but for the purposes of this case study, we are going to uh, go with the textbook and say that it was the Australian plate where it met the Sunda plate at the Sunda Trench, and that was the subduction zone. Um, you'll see in your notes, a 15 metre slippage happened along this fault line in two stages, leading to the prolonged earthquake that we had. Um, and for extra detail, to add to your introduction, you could mention that the tsunamis begin as a wave of less than 30 centimetres and can travel at up to 500 miles per hour. In the images to the right hand side here, you can see the areas affected. Sumatra in Indonesia, along with Thailand, received some of the worst damage. Um, but as far west as Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania, Madagascar, down at the bottom here, the effects were felt. If we move down now to the impacts, you can see some images here. If we look here, we can see the before and after uh, on a section of the Sumatra coastline, the extent of the damage. Um, we're going to break our impacts into short term, long term, and within that, people and environment. Um, so if we have a look here, these are the same as that, the notes that are in your ebook. You can see they're broken down into point evidence explain. Um, try and include figures throughout and developing our points to maximise the marks for each section. You could be asked uh, a simple four mark question or it could be incorporated into a longer eight or nine mark question. Just be very aware of what they're asking for in terms of is it short term, long term, is it asking specifically for people or environment. Now you can see at the bottom here we've included a link for a YouTube clip from the National Geographic documentary. This is well worth watching, and if you follow the link in your ebook, that will take you straight to it. We're now going to move over to look at um, the responses to the Indian Ocean earthquake. And this is where our LEDC, MEDC status comes in. So because the areas around the Indian Ocean earthquake were predominantly LEDCs, as you can see over here, um, the response and the preparation was pretty, pretty poor. Um, Prior to the earthquake, there was no early warning system in place um, to try and predict as best as possible the potential for earthquakes. And in the aftermath, as we can see here, the response wasn't what it would be in an MEDC, uh, such as Japan or America. So again, if you're asked about responses, you could be asked about the short term or long term, immediate or long term in this case. Um, the immediate impacts were predominantly aid based. Emergency aid provided from all over the world, over 7 billion was needed to help uh, from a variety of governments and non government organisations, for example, Oxfam. Uh, in the long term, they looked at their strategies for predicting earthquakes, and 25 new seismograph stations were involved. Um, you can see from the diagram below, this is also in your ebook, how this works and how this helped to predict future earthquakes and help to give some sort of early warning. Okay, so we're now going to move to look at the aftermath, what's changed since 2004. Um, we're going to look at this in a positive and negative style uh, in order to prepare for a potential evaluate style question which could come up. So, in terms of positives, 10 years on, Banda Ake has been largely rebuilt. Uh, there's a, a memorial park uh, where a ship had washed up five kilometres inland and the population has risen back to 250,000. You can see over here some images 
of the area before and after the disaster. However, there are still some negatives. Because the country lies in a dangerous fault line, um, earthquakes are inevitable, and the tsunami warning system will only give 30 minutes of warning. So this isn't really enough in reality to fully evacuate. The systems that were put in place were tested on the 11th of April 2012 when an 8.6 magnitude earthquake struck Bandiaki, and the results were pretty worrying. The conditions were described as totally chaotic by Sifara Merlina al Masuri, a lifelong resident of Bandiaki who worked for the Red Cross during the 2004 tsunami. Instead of evacuating to safe areas, people were going home or picking up the kids from school, which created traffic, traffic jams. And the staff responsible for operating the tsunami sirens also fled and the three-storey tsunami shelters were locked. So the government will have to improve their response in order to ensure citizens know what to do. And given the cost of such measures, it seems unlikely this can be implemented effectively. So the last thing we're going to consider then with reference to this particular case study is a past paper question, a potential past paper question, and some tips for how to address it. So if this is a past paper question that carries seven, eight, nine marks, a higher mark question, uh, some tips. Please read the question carefully. Is it asking for a description or evaluation? Is it asking for uh, consequences, impacts? Is it asking for uh, the causes of the earthquake, the dates involved, etc.? Uh, longer mark questions could well be in evaluate style. So take care, if that is the case, to include both, both sides of the argument as well as your own personal opinion for a conclusion. This question at the bottom here is a possible question. There could be many other variations, but it's a good one to look at for an example of how to tackle it. So with reference to a named earthquake in an MEDC or LADC, evaluate how the country responded to the earthquake in the long and short term. So if you see a question asking for a named earthquake in an MEDC or LADC, that should um, flash up to you that that is your Indian Ocean earthquake. And we have picked the LADC option, which you can mention in your introduction. Um, how has the country responded to it in the long and short term? In this case, then, we have to address two different areas. We can see here the structure I have suggested below. Introduction first, examples of responses in the short term, positive and negative. The same then for long term, and a brief conclusion with your opinion, because it is an evaluate question. So you can see the introduction here, try and keep it fairly concise. Name your earthquake first. You could mention there it's in an LADC. And a couple of quick figures to show you know what you're talking about from the start. Potential figure on Richter scale, 9.2, and 15 metre slippage over 10 minutes, something else you could include. We can then see two short-term responses, each point developed with figures uh, and an evidence to prove it, and we're tackling long and short-term. You can see then the purple are long-term responses. Again, try and pick a point with suitable figures. Um, to push you up into the top level marks. And finally then, the orange we can see our conclusion. You can look through all this at your own time on your ebook. book um, doesn't need to be too long. Overall, a variety of responses, long short term, however, and then state your opinion. In the case of the Indian Ocean earthquake, your opinion is probably going to be that the um, responses put in place are probably inad inadequate. It's very difficult to, to predict the earthquakes to start with and then to respond to them appropriately, especially when the country is potentially quite poorly developed as an LADC.